Great Spirit, chi miigwech for the love and strength you have given us as a people of First Nations. We were gifted with a song about three years ago when we went to visit the Earth Mounts or Earthworks in Ohio. As elders, we visited to continue the gratitude given by many nations of people who visited 4,000 years ago. We thanked our ancestors and the Creator for the beautiful harvest of fresh vegetables and medicines from Mother Earth. As I entered the eastern entrance doorway of the San Mono area, there was a beautiful tree standing there. I looked down and before my very eyes was a lonely strawberry. I thought I was seeing things. I got down on my hands and knees and looked down closer. It was real and the little strawberry was shaped like a heart. I started to cry. It gave me such joy to see our sacred food at the time of the year. Usually our strawberries are only came to us during the month of June. I heard a very distinct tune in my ears that made me cry harder. I walked towards the elders standing, talking with each other. I told them, the Creator gifted us with a song. I started to hum. <laughs> We all started to sing together as we walked to the eastern door. As we entered the doorway, the leaves started blowing and dancing with joy in circles. I told the elders, our ancestors and the Creator heard us with this beautiful tune of gratitude. On the way back to Monroe, the words of the tune came to me. We quickly recorded it as not to forget it. The tune reminded me of how we asked for help when we were in the boarding schools. I really didn't want to go to the Shinwak Indian Residential Boarding School. The Indian agent asked my mom which ones are going to the boarding school. The school was in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, over 800 miles away. My mom chose David and I to go. I started crying and ran to talk with my grandma. She started to cry too. I was only eight, David was six, and I stayed for 13 years. My experience with the boarding school was both good and bad. I was very lonesome for my family and especially my grandma. She was my teacher and mentor growing up. I watched her do everything. Before I left school, she told me, Daisy, do not forget our language because you will always know who you are and where you come from. Our village, with where we call Waswanipi, light over water. At the boarding school, I was separated from my brother David, but I would sneak into his classroom to see him or secretly meet him at the back of the school. David became an alcoholic after we left the boarding school, and later I learned he had been sexually abused, as I had too. He passed into the spirit world seven years ago. In 2012, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I believe the trauma and the separation from David and my family triggered my breast cancer. I chose not to have my breast removed due chemotherapy or radiation. I went to Tennessee for treatment that used natural methods for healing. I was there for 11 days, and it's been three years since my diagnosis. I practice natural medicine, eat organic foods, and pray daily. I even sing in my car when I'm driving into work or going to the store. I have been a member of the Snowbird Singers for seven years. Dudem. <laughs>